Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm extremely excited because I got my brand new Origin PC. This is a monster of a computer. It's going to be my primary gaming and potentially editing PC as well. I brought my dogs along for the unboxing. I'll be reviewing this PC and benchmarking it compared to my one-year-old Origin PC, and you will be surprised by just how much of a performance improvement you can get with one year's worth of hardware development. Now, I really do love opening up this wood crate there's just something about getting a pc in a wooden crate as opposed to a beat up cardboard box and when you finally do get this open you've got a nice pristine cardboard box on the inside with no dent marks on the corners now i've been sponsored by origin pc going on four years now which has been an absolutely great relationship and i like that they've stuck to their signature move of shipping their computers in wooden crates like that it's just got a nice bit of class to it Getting down to the last bits here, we've got all the components and drivers in this Origin branded box. And then the PC itself is actually contained in a cloth sheath as opposed to being wrapped in a plastic bag like most other PCs. Now Origin has their own custom case that they've designed. You can get it in different colors. You can even get prints on the side of it if you want something more custom. Uh, and it's got easily removable sides without needing any sorts of tools. Now it's great having a good looking PC, but I use my computers for work. They gotta be workhorses and that's why I'm so excited about what is on the inside of this machine. Starting off, this is my very first PCI SSD. It's an Intel 750 series. 1.2 terabytes. This is for the system drive and this has got a read speed of 2500 megabytes per second which is five times faster than my previous solid state drive. I've never gone PCI before and I gotta tell you everything just opens instantly. Above that, we have what is objectively the fastest graphics card on the market. This is the GeForce GTX Titan X Pascal. It's insanely fast, insanely expensive, of course, but uh, it just blows everything out of the water. It runs Battlefield amazingly, as you'll see later. Now for the CPU, we've got the Origin Frostbite 360 cooling system. That's uh, basically a self-contained liquid cooling system, keeping my CPU cold. And the CPU itself is the Intel Core i7-6850K. This is actually a hexacore CPU. And with Intel's hyper-threading, it gives me 12 virtual cores. I thought this CPU would be the best balance between work and play, giving me a high clock rate for video games and many cores for rendering out videos. For the motherboard we have the EVGA X99 II and then with that comes 32 gigabytes of DDR4 Kingston memory. And then powering the whole system is a 1000 watt EVGA G2 power supply unit. Now I gotta say I really like EVGA components. I remember when all they made was graphics cards and now they're making motherboards power supplies and even more. Um, and I gotta say all their components are very good. It's, it's really nice to see their company expanding and I highly recommend them. Now around the front of the case, we have an opening panel here and I didn't request any sort of Blu-ray drive or anything like that, but we do get a nice five bay hot swap bay for hard drives. This makes installing hard drives an absolute breeze and if you need to swap them around between PCs, again, a very easy thing to do. And then if you ever take a look at the backside of an Origin PC, you'll notice that their cable management is absolutely pristine. Keeping the cables neat and tucked away actually allows for better airflow with inside the PC box. On the back, we can see how many USB ports and audio options we have on the motherboard, plus the GPU ports, and we even see the back of the PCI SSD. Now, if you'd like a detailed list of these components, I will provide one in the video description, as well as a link to the Origin PC website if you want to look into getting your own custom PC made for you. And of course, the first thing I had to do once firing up this computer was hop into a game of Battlefield 1 Operations 64 players to just stress the GPU and CPU to the max and I was not disappointed with the performance of this system. It's absolutely insane and I'll talk about some of the frame rates in just a second. I want to answer some questions that uh, I've gotten on previous Origin PC builds. A lot of people ask me why I don't go with an SLI system and it's certainly not a budget conscious choice. It's actually a performance conscious choice. Uh, SLI brings with it a lot of micro stuttering that affects many games. Some people claim that they have found ways around some of the micro stuttering issues, but ultimately I found 
it to be a big nuisance and a big hassle to try and troubleshoot micro stuttering that comes as a result of SLI and I've just decided to forego it altogether. I'd prefer just to run the fastest single GPU available and not bother with SLI. The other thing people might look at the system and critique is that it only has one hard drive in it right now, a PCI SSD with 1.2 terabytes. I use that for my system drive and for installing games on it and a few of my editing programs as well, but I store all of my data on a separate server PC, which I have connected to this PC through a 10 gigabyte ethernet card. And that allows me to virtualize drives between PCs so I can have incredibly fast read and write speeds uh, on drives that don't exist on my main gaming PC. And this just makes it very simple for me to upgrade or modify my main PC. I don't have to worry about hard drives at all because they're all just networked via a different server PC. All right, now onto the Battlefield 1 benchmarking. The first test was done at 1080p. Unfortunately, Battlefield 1 doesn't have an official benchmarking uh, test, so you can't get the exact results each time. There were slight differences in the environmental effects and stuff during the test, but for the most part, I found it didn't really affect the frame rate too much. Both of these are tested with ultra settings, the exact same field of view, no differences whatsoever in the game settings themselves. And as you can see, the frame rate difference is substantial. I was clocking at least 50% improvement from a year old system. That's absolutely insane. The technology leap in the last year has been huge, much bigger than it has in previous years. And clearly Battlefield 1 is taking advantage of the new hardware here. You may not see the exact kind of performance benefit in other titles, but Battlefield 1, without a question, takes full advantage of the extra cores and the insanely fast GPU. And again, testing at 1440p on ultra settings with my custom FOV, I'm using a 69 vertical, 85 horizontal field of view. It's a bit bigger than the standard field of view. Um, and again, we're seeing a huge performance increase on the new system. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be playing this game on full ultra settings. I think there's some benefits here and there, but some of them I've turned down. Like I don't use anti-aliasing when I'm playing, so I just turn that off and I turn off some of the extreme lighting effects or things that might not be quite as pronounced while you're actually playing the game, but will actually have a much bigger performance impact than a visual improvement. So there's little things that I tweak and mess with just to get as good of an FPS as possible. Running through on my own custom settings here, this time with anti-aliasing turned off and a few other settings adjusted, I can now get above 140 frame rate at 1440p. Granted, from testing it out a bit more, it will dip down into the 120s on 64 player servers with intense combat going on, but it's still incredible for a mostly high or ultra graphic settings at 1440p in this game. I am just absolutely thrilled with the performance. And being able to play at such a high resolution at such a high frame rate, I feel gives a bigger advantage than it has in previous Battlefield games. One thing that's really progressed with the Frostbite engine is the level of detail that DICE has been able to put into their map design and environmental design. There's lots of debris, rubble, dirt, stuff like that where uniforms start blending into the environment. It becomes trickier to see your opponent and the benefits you can get from a higher resolution system where you can really start to pick apart the details in your scene will allow you to identify enemies a bit faster. Just playing a few games at 1440p at this resolution was kind of illuminating. I actually was playing Battlefield 1 at 1080p even though I have a 1440p monitor just because I wasn't able to get the frames that I wanted before. But now that I can hit clearly over 120 even in the most intense situations, uh, I'm just loving the 1440p resolution and the added detail I get from it. Now obviously I'm playing on an incredibly high-end system. If you can afford a system like this then that's great for you, but I know not everybody out there can afford to buy a PC of this caliber. That being said, Origin does offer a lot of mid-range options and the fact that so much good hardware has come out in the last year has given us many options for budget conscious builds out there that can still handle Battlefield 1 at really high frame rate. So if you're thinking about doing an upgrade or getting a new PC, now is certainly a good time to do it with the, the great leap in technology as I've seen from my previous 2015 
2015 build versus the 2016 build. Who knows what's in store for 2017, but if you guys are looking at a custom PC making company, Origin PC does a great job. They have great tech support, warranty, all kinds of epic options. Um, and again, the link for their website is in the video description. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.